With the models in front of me and the machine next to me, I believe it's time we talk about the Zix Plus 3D printer. I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. At time of film... At, One more, Sean. The Zix Plus is a fully enclosed Cartesian style 3D printer. It's got 265 on the X, 225 on the Y, and 195 on the Z. It's a direct drive through a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It's got filament detection, it's got a filtration system, it has auto bed leveling, and it does some sort of magic with a non-heated bed that allows any material to stick to it. The Zix Plus does run Sailfish. It's a custom open source Sailfish firmware version that they've loaded on there, which means you have to use X3G files. It will not take G code. Using X3G files means it's, it's that compiled version of G code and uh, Simplify 3D will spit that out. Yes, Simplify 3D is an added charge, but in the box was a certificate for a free copy of Simplify 3D. So I think that uh, that levels the playing field. It'll print PLA, ABS, TPU, uh, other flexible materials, lay wood, PET, lay brick, T glaze, the list goes on, and like I said also, there's not a heated bed. It's running a Zix 3D print sheet top layer on top of a glass plate that is attached via magnets, and it can be removed. It includes the air filter in the enclosed chamber, and it is quiet. Very quiet. When I first saw this machine and Zix first approached me for a review, I thought, well, this looks just like my FlashForge Creator Pro, which was the first printer I ever owned. And while, like the FlashForge, it runs Sailfish, and like the FlashForge, it has the same buttons on the front, and like the FlashForge, it has the filament loading from behind, I believe that's where it ends, because the build area is larger than the FlashForge. It only has a single nozzle. It does not have a heated build plate, and it provides those added features that I spoke about in the beginning. As you can see in front of me, the prints from this machine are pretty decent, and these are various materials. Let's dive in. First, we've got this Nitro box. This is from Crash Bandicoot and modeled by Flowlistic. This is actually PETG material. It stuck to the build plate just fine. It was able to extrude the material just fine, and I would consider this a perfect print. Now we've got some PLA prints. There's this blue, purple. This is the black Pro PLA from Zix. Here's the Felenia Malkin you can get on Thingiverse. Here's the Enable Hand that I printed and did a video on as well. PLA prints are, of course, one of the easier prints to make because of the material, but it printed these just fine. The rocket and the vase turned out great. This dice tower looks wonderful, and the dice fall and roll as you would expect. The detail is there on the Felenia Malkin. Although handling meant I broke some of the guns, and I'm sorry about that on Solo. I did print this calibration cube, and if I get out my calipers, it looks like it measures 20.14, 20.3, 20.2. So it's not perfect, it's not calibrated, but I believe it's close enough to call these prints good. I would further calibrate it if you were going to do things that required very specific dimensions. The printer is able to do ABS, and like I said, there's no heated bed, and the Zix 3D printer top sheet on the build plate holds it just great. In fact, it held it a little too well, and as you can see right through the vase here, the bottom held onto the build plate, and this Mega Man's another example of that. The raft stuck to the build plate, the cooling of the ABS was inconsistent, and so this cooled and shrunk a little bit faster than this, and it actually popped the leg right off. I don't know if the ABS was in the perfect condition. It was an older ABS material I had, but if you look at the print of the vase and you look at the print of Mega Man, it looks decent. So maybe it just requires a little bit of time in a filament dryer. I didn't experiment further. Now let's talk about flexibles. This vase was printed with the Zix Pro Flex material. In fact, uh, I was sent two of the black spools originally. After I printed this though, I ran into a ton of issues where I had all sorts of clogging on the nozzle. The filament detection sensor was, was going off even though there was filament in there. I ended up measuring this material and it did on average go above 1.75. In fact, some of the material was 1.85. I was sent a new roll, but this gray roll was the same problem. It wasn't until one of the engineers actually sent me a test spool of TPU from their 
desktop machine in their office that I was able to get some flexible prints that worked. And these uh, Darth Vader Red Bull koozies actually are a great example of the flexible material that I was able to put through there. This vase is one thing. That gas cap tether that I did in my car, that was in this black material as well. Once we got further in the material though, it was out of spec. This blue material was within spec and I verified that it was able to print just fine. In order to print flexible, Zix includes what's called their soft spring. There's a spring inside the extruder that causes the idler bearing to press against the filament, which then presses against the hob bolt. When you use a soft spring, there's not as much pressure and that's what you need for flexible filaments. And this little thing that they include right here, this is a spring compressor. So you can take the spring out, you can put the spring in, and it's able to print these flexible materials without issue. In the end, you're getting a well-built machine with a decent build volume with the ability to print various materials with a feature set that is great for someone who wants to have a more bulletproof printer or with a little bit more peace of mind. However, at the time of filming, this machine on matterhackers.com is 2000 199 US dollars. It's not a low cost machine by any stretch of the imagination. You're getting a good feature set, but when compared with machines with similar features, this price seems high. It's a solid machine with a great company behind it, but with that high price, if money's no object, I highly suggest you take a look at this machine. You're going to get some quality prints, but if price does matter to you and you want to get the best bang for your buck, I'm going to suggest you skip this machine and you shop around. And with that, we're going to call this review good. If you liked what I said, if you agree with me, if you think you want to talk further about why this machine isn't worth the price it's listed for, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you think I'm way off base and I can't compare this machine to others or if it's totally worth the price it's listed for, I'd love to hear your arguments down in the comment section. Beyond that though, a big thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not and ring that bell to be notified of when red printed things are uploaded to the channel. Big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon, YouTube Red, PayPal donations, and for everybody that lets the ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.